Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to walk you through an exercise uh, that imports data into a Microsoft Access database. Uh, we're going to run a couple of queries on it. Uh, we're going to show you how to export that data into uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and so let's get started. Uh, we're going to use data from data.gov. This is the United States government's portal for open data. Uh, we're going to grab a fairly large database, so you need to have at least a couple of hundred megabytes of uh, free disk space uh, on your computer or uh, on your external uh, drive or flash drive. Uh, we're going to go to Climate. Uh, we're going to go to Data. We're going to drill down here just a little bit um, to where you see Farm Program Payments. It should be fairly close to the top here. Uh, we're going to go to the download page. Uh, we're going to take a look at the farm payment files. These are payments made to farmers uh, for various subsidy programs. We're going to analyze some of that data. There are three files I want you to grab uh, from this page. The first is the 2011 um, farm payment file right here. Um, that's a zip file. That one's 22 megabytes, but it's going to get a lot bigger when we unzip it. So the farm payment file right there. Uh, these may come up in a different order uh, when you look at the page, but the farm payment file is the one that we want. Then there are some reference and lookup files. We want the standard payment layout file. Uh, this is the file that's going to explain how this file is laid out in terms of the fields, field sizes, and so on. And we also want the program commodity code list. That's an Excel spreadsheet. So those are the three files that we need. Uh, you want to download all those to the same file, excuse me, the same folder. Uh, and then if we take a look at that folder, uh, you need to unzip the um, uh, payment data file. Uh, when you unzip that, it might try to unzip that to a subfolder. Um, just be aware of that when we go hunting for it in Access. Uh, I've got them located in the same directory uh, so that we can go searching for them. Uh, you can see when you unzip that it gets quite a bit bigger, so be aware of that. Uh, so the idea is that we're going to import this text file and this uh, loan program lookup uh, that contains the uh, words that go with the code uh, so that we can get the words to all these different programs uh, into our Access database. So we'll be creating uh, two tables in Access, and then we're going to run a couple of queries on those. Uh, so the next step then is to go to Access. Uh, we're going to create a blank desktop database, uh, and we'll close this uh, initial table that it tries to create. Uh, and we're going to create two new tables, and we're going to create them by grabbing the external data. The first table that we're going to open is the uh, Payments table. Uh, we know that that's a text table, and so I'm going to go to External Data, and we're going to open a text table. Uh, we need to browse to that table uh, to find it, so I'm going to open up um, and go to the folder where I've got that table. This is the table, uh, and we'll start by opening that. And what we want to do is import the source data into a new table in the current uh, database. So we click OK, and it shows us the table. Now, when you're importing tables, especially if they're either text tables uh, or Excel, uh, but in particular the, the text tables, there are usually two different kinds of tables. There are delimited, um, in which each field uh, for each record is separated by some kind of character. Uh, usually it's a comma, sometimes it's a tab. Um, there are also fixed width. Um, uh, which aren't delimited by anything, uh, and uh, there's just a certain number of characters uh, to each field in the record. Uh, it turns out that this particular table is, is actually kind of both, but since um, it has the semicolon character between each, uh, we're going to treat it as delimited, and Access has, recognizes it, has recognized it as delimited. Uh, we don't want to pull in those semicolons, uh, so we're going to go with delimited, even though it's also fixed width. Uh, and we'll go ahead and click the Next button here. Uh, and it recognizes that the semicolon is the delimiter. You want to be careful. Sometimes Access will misrecognize, uh, so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, this particular 
table, the first row does not contain field names. Uh, if it did, you could check this button and it would try to make these into field names, but um, that's not the case here. So uh, the first row does not contain field names. We'll need to assign field names as we go through the import process. So semicolon delimited, first row does not contain field names. We can go to uh, our next. So uh, here's where we go through and take a look at each individual field and determine what the data type should be. Uh, and Access will try to make some decisions about it, but uh, quite honestly, Access often, if not usually, makes the wrong decision uh, or the decision that's not going to work best for us. Um, now, recall that one of the files that we downloaded uh, was the field um, description layout file. Uh, so I'm going to suggest that uh, we move this over a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the uh, standard payment layout file over here on this side. Uh, and, and this is the file that we downloaded from the website that tells us what all these fields are and are supposed to be. Uh, so as we go through uh, each of the one of these fields, um, you're going to want to have this up on the left side of the screen. I'm going to zoom in so we're concentrating on this, but, but you're going to want to have both of these up at the same time uh, and as you go through this. And the, the idea is going to be to go through each one of these fields and in this case, because the file um, itself didn't have uh, field names or headers, we're going to need to give each one of these as we go through them. You can step through them like this. Um, a field name, and then we're going to have to take a look at the uh, data type. Uh, you can also elect to skip, that is, do not import a, a field. Uh, we're going to go ahead and import all of them, uh, but you can skip a field if you have some reason not to import it. And you can also decide whether to index a field or not. Um, and you can, you can choose to index a field later if for some reason there's a performance reason to do so. Uh, we're not going to pay any attention to these, these two right now, but we do need to get a field name uh, and the correct data type. Uh, so field one um, uh, is, is, according to our table, the state code. Um, uh, and uh, Access has looked at this and it thinks it's a number. Uh, but notice we have leading zeros here. Uh, so I'm going to suggest that we call this field the state code. Uh, and I'm also going to suggest that we don't choose long integer for this, that in fact we make this a text type. And uh, we've had this discussion in previous lessons about uh, what kind of data types we want to choose. And in fact, a lot of things that look like numbers, we actually want to make them text. Uh, and we're going to look at field two, and that's country code. And for the same reason, we're going to make this short text. Uh, now, what these state codes are and what the country codes are uh, would come from other tables. These are just numbers. Uh, and we will we'll show one descriptive um, table we're going to import for the um, uh, for uh, commodity codes uh, and program codes. And, and there would be another table that would explain what these are. We're not going to use them in our queries. Uh, so we're not going to pull those uh, descriptive tables in, but we'll, we'll show how that works uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, field number three. Uh, is the customer number. Uh, it's correctly identified. This is short text because we can see that we've got um, uh, alphanumeric uh, information in here. That is, we've got letters and numbers. Uh, field 4 um, is the uh, program code. Uh, we're going to make this. Um, it thinks it's a long integer uh, because it sees all those numbers, uh, but we're going to make uh, this short text. In fact, um, all of the um, uh, all of the program codes, the, the different um, uh, codes, we're going to make short text. Uh, field um, um, the next field is uh, field five. 
uh, is actually a year, and year I think we can safely go ahead. Um, this is the program year. And I think we can safely go ahead and make that an integer. Um, field um, 6 is the commodity code. So let's put, um, let's put that in. And we're going to make this um, short text. Um, clearly, we've got leading zeros here. Here's one that's um, an integer, but we've got leading zeros. Uh, field 7 is the amount, so that's transaction amount. Um, access would like to make this a double anytime uh, access sees decimal points. It likes to make this a double, but in fact, we know better from uh, previous conversations. We're going to make this currency. Uh, field 7 access identifies this as date with time. Uh, but this is a little bit of an odd format with a dash here. Uh, I already know this may cause problems. We're not going to use this field, so it probably doesn't make any difference. But in cases like that, it's often uh, wiser to select the short text data type. And if you need to do a conversion later to um, make sure that you convert this uh, to a field that's a proper access uh, data type. Um, the next field, field 9, is a category code. Uh, we're going to make that short text access already. Figured that out. Uh, field 10 is farm number. Um, with all the leading zeros, clearly that should be short text. Uh, field 11 is a um, calendar year. We can safely make calendar year um, an integer. Field 12 is fiscal year. Uh, we can safely make that an integer. Uh, field 13 is a sequence number. That may very well fit into the long integer type, but we also don't want to risk a crash during import, so it might be safer to initially treat this as short text. If we find out that it is a valid uh, long integer type, we can always convert the field into um, a long integer later. And when I say convert, you probably can't. This is going to be too big a data set to, to just change the type, but you could write it into another field. Um, as a long integer uh, if you needed to actually convert that. So now we can we can double check field 8. Oh, I didn't I didn't have the right um, field name for that. That's transaction date. So it doesn't hurt to double check all these um, as you go along and make sure that we haven't missed something. The idea, especially for the um, uh, all the different codes, uh, is that we uh, bring these across as short text, even the ones that look like they might be might be numbers. Um, then uh, the question is to let access add a primary key or to choose one of these fields as a primary key. Uh, I almost always during import let access add a primary key, even if there might be a good candidate in here for a primary key. This assures that if there happens to be something bad in the data, um, you know, some problem, uh, that you won't crash the import routine. You can always change one of these later uh, into a primary key, so it doesn't hurt to let access add one. Uh, and so that's my feelings on that. Uh, we're going to call this table payments. And then I think that's all we need to do to finish. It'll take a few seconds to import. You can see the progress down here at the bottom. It's moving fairly quickly. All right, it says finished importing the file uh, to table payments. Um, do you want to save these import steps? This will allow you to quickly repeat the operation without using the wizard. If, 
if you had several tables that were exactly the same that you needed to import um, or import on a regular basis, you could save the steps. <clears throat> That's not the case here, so we'll close this. Let's take a look at what we've got. So I'm going to double click this so we can look at the table. And this looks fairly straightforward. Uh, I would like to call your attention to uh, our, our um, bar down here at the bottom uh, and, and how many records we've got. This is um, 1.8 million records. So this is a large data set. Um, this is nearly twice the number of records you could import into Excel. Excel has a limit of just a little bit over a million records. So we have a lot of records here. So uh, if you're dealing with data sets this size, you can't even do them in Excel. You're going to need to bring them into a database um, like Access. So uh, there's that. Let me, let me close this. And recall that there is another data set that we need to bring in, uh, which is the list of codes. So we had a commodity code in there, but we don't really know what that commodity code represented. So the other table that we need to bring in uh, is the table that tells you in English what all those codes were. Uh, let's open this up. And again, we're going to import the source data into a new table in the current database. Um, with an Excel, we also can append a copy of the records to another table if we were just adding records to an existing table. Uh, we, can, we can do that as well. There's also an option to link to the data source by creating a link table. Um, but we're, we're going to just create a new table uh, with that. Um, it's telling us that the first row contains some data that can't be used for valid access field names. We'll take a look at that when we get to the import wizard. Um, this is really just informational. It will, it will automatically assign valid field names, so that's not really uh, an error message. <clears throat> and so let's take a look at what we've got. <clears throat> Since this is Excel um, as opposed to a, a, a text file, it can do a little bit better job of parsing things out for us. And in this case, the first row does contain column headings. So we can probably just keep these. Uh, we'll take a look at it. But it's identified that for us. Uh, let's click Next in the wizard. Here we have the same process that we did before. We need to look at each one of these. We've got a category code. It's identified as short text, category name as short text. Program code, it says double. We know we don't want that. Um, so we're going to convert that to short text. Commodity code, we know we need short text. Uh, and by the way, when we're doing this, um, we're going to relate these with equivalent fields in the other table. And we can only do that if they're the same type. So. It, even if we decided that we thought we wanted this to be an integer, if we didn't make it the same access data type as the other table, we wouldn't be able to relate them. So when we're importing, we have to be especially careful that um, when we're importing information that we're going to try to relate, that we're consistent about the data types that we use to relate them. So. Um, uh, we've got the program code here. We want short text, commodity code. Um, we are going to make everything in this table um, if Access doesn't already pick it short text, and I think it will. There's something over here. I don't know what that is. Um, some spurious column in that file. We're just going to leave it alone. It says short text, so we're going to be happy with that. Um, again, we're going to let Access add a primary key. And um, we are going to call this um, name lookup. Because that's what we're going to use it for. We're going to use it to look up the names that correspond to the codes. And we will finish. And we'll close. And let's take a look at our name lookup table. 
Now, for purposes of this exercise, because um, if you're taking my class, you're going to need to hand something in, let's select this column uh, and um, sort it in ascending order and go down to um, Acre and change Acre to your last name. Simple enough change. Okay, and we've got 1,200 of these records. Now, um, so we've got these two tables imported. Um, and so what can we do with them? If, if we look at, let's look at our payment table again. I'm going to close this. These are all the different payments that are made to individuals for um, different kinds of farm subsidies and so on. And we can see that they're made um, to different customers for different programs uh, and all kinds of different amounts, anywhere from a couple of hundred bucks to here's a $48,000 payment. Um, so there's all kinds of interesting questions you could ask of this database. Uh, and you could actually even pull in other kinds of data, data.gov. Uh, and maybe relate tables and, and do some interesting things. But just for purposes of this exercise, um, suppose we were interested in finding out what what kinds of amounts uh, went to these different programs. Um, now with 1.8 million records, if we don't do some kind of pre-sorting or some kind of filtering, uh, we could we could run a report and access would process it. But um, I've run some preliminary experiments on this database. And there are some reports that could take a long time to run without some, some preliminary filtering. So um, let's, for the sake of argument, say that we want to limit um, what we're looking at to uh, individual payments of $10,000 or more. What are, what are the big bucks going for? And I tried this a couple of different ways. And if I try to make a single query with that criterion, it can still take a few hours to run. But if I run a pre-query that filters it first on the $10,000 and then run a second report based on that query, uh, we can actually get it done pretty quickly. So this will illustrate um, a few different concepts. So the first query that I'm going to run uh, is going to uh, take the fields that we want to look at uh, and sort out those payments that are above $10,000. So we're going to run query number one. And we will go to create. Uh, and we'll go to query design. Uh, and we're just going to need our payments table for this one. Uh, and we'll close that. And let's, let's open this up a little bit more. And I'll, I'll show you the, the fields that we want. We want um, uh, program code. We want commodity code, and I'm just double clicking these to pull them down. We want category code, and we want transaction amount. Where'd that go? Okay, and for transaction amount, <clears throat> we just want greater than 10,000. And we're going to run that and see what we come up with. And this is going to take really just a just a, uh, a few seconds. We've already got our answer here. So we have 21,000. So out of 1.8 million, now we've got a record set that really is only about 21,000. And it took us just a few minutes to do that. Um, so I'm going to save that. And that's going to save that as query number one. So that's, that's a fine title, don't you think? And let me close that. And let me also close the payments table at this point. Now, we're going to run another query. Uh, and let me pull up my notes on this one. Um, so let's go to Create and Query Design. And for this one, I want 
the name lookup because for this one I would really like to see what those codes are in English. So I'm going to add um, the name lookup. Uh, and I'm going to, instead of using the base table, which has the 1.8 million records in it, I'm going to use query 1, which has just the information in it we need uh, and also uh, will only present us with 21,000 records. So I'm going to add that and um, close. And let me open this one up. Let me open that one up and makes more sense to me if I switch these around a little bit. <clears throat> now what we have to do here is we have to relate these two tables. Uh, and we do that by telling what information in our query one is equivalent to the information in the name lookup table. So over here the program code is the same information as the program code over here. Did you see what I did? I'm going to click on commodity code and drag it to commodity code over here and that creates that link. And the same thing with category code is the same as category code over here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring down the fields that I would like to look at in the order that I would like to look at them in. So I would like category name first, and I double clicked on it and that brought it down here, and commodity name second, and program name third, and then finally transaction amount fourth. Now what's going to make this interesting is I'm not really interested in seeing all 20,000 here. I really kind of like just to see the the subtotals for each one of those. And so um, I'm going to uh, make this a, um, a group by or, or a, a subtotals. I'm going to want to sort these in ascending order here. And then under group by, I would like the sum of the transaction amounts. Uh, so I don't know if you saw what I did there, but what I'm getting by is I'm sorting these by first by category name, then by commodity name, then by program name, and what I've asked for is a totals report. Uh, and so what I'm going to get is as, as each one of these breaks or goes to a different value, I'm going to get a sum at that point. So let's see what happens when I actually run this, and then let's also see how long it's going to take. So I'm going to click View, and it really is um, pretty quick. Let's, let's um, expand these so we can see what's going on. So category name, commodity name, program name, and as each one of these changes, I get a subtotal here. So I've got 50 different subtotals here and the total number of payments, sum of transaction amount. So these are all the different programs for which there are individual payments of more than $10,000. And I've got the sum of the transaction amounts um, so I can see which are the really big, um, uh, big checks and how much those go to each one of those programs. So we've taken a, a two million, um, uh, excuse me, a hundred and what was it, hundred and one point eight million record database, um, and really in a few minutes sliced and diced it um, pretty well. Got a couple of reports out of there. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this query. And query number two is fine, and let's go ahead and close it. Well, first let's note that um, I know this is your report. Uh, now let's go ahead and close it. Okay, so um, we're done with access, but now let's go back to um, Excel perhaps. And if we right click on that query, we note that we can export this um, to Excel because 
Uh, we might find it easier to go back to Excel to do some further sorting. Maybe we want to graph or chart it. Maybe we want to put it into um, a report. Um, so we can export this back to Excel. Um, it's as, as it defaults here, or you can uh, put it someplace else. It's going to go back into our um, the same directory that we uh, had started with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just click Export here. And uh, I don't need to save the export steps and close that. So if we go back to our directory, uh, now we've got this query here. I can open this back up in Excel. And here we go. Uh, so, you know, I might, um, I might want to sort this and find out who the from small to large. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with this in Excel. So uh, whatever you feel like doing. Anyway, uh, this, this gives you some idea then of how to get data into and out of uh, Access. Uh, maybe trade it back and forth uh, to and from. Excel in particular is especially, especially useful. That happens a lot. Um, uh, you might find it easier. I find it easier to do pivot tables in Excel than I do in Access. Uh, if you want to do charts and graphs, maybe you find charts and graphs easier. Let's try a pie chart here. That's probably going to make a silly looking pie chart, but anyway, um, you can play around with that. But that gives you the idea of how to get in and out of um, Access uh, doing the import export. And this is particularly useful with, with ad hoc data uh, and with research data. And um, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, go ahead and give the exercise a try. And, um, you know, perhaps uh, prowl around a bit on uh, the data.gov, lots of good data there. Uh, maybe give it a shot on your own. So thank you for watching.